The packaging for health and beauty products is a recycling disaster. Every year, people throw away more than a hundred billion of these items. And the corporations that make this stuff toss mountains of products that never even hit shelves. Most recycling centers won't take them because they're just too hard to process. But one British business has found a way. I'll tell you the hardest bit is trying not to get burned by the machines. Refactory turns the waste into plywood-like boards. They can be used for anything, from planters to furniture. We decided to go and invest into something that nobody thought would work. As more and more brands want to be seen as sustainable, this company helps them clean up their act. So do these boards have any downsides? And what does it take to recycle the unrecyclable? About a third of the cosmetics waste refactory handles comes from collection boxes placed at stores around the UK. People are only supposed to drop cosmetics packaging. But all kinds of things end up at the factory to be sorted by workers like Curtis. Anything you can think of is being here. He goes through about 20 bags like this every day. So what I'm really looking for here is metals, glass and batteries. So they all go to separate sections. Some products have a little of everything in them, like makeup palettes, which often have a glass mirror, metal trays and a plastic shell. We'll split the makeup palette apart. One will go into the metal pile and one will go to the glass pile. Pallets from this brand can cost around $50. And like a lot of items in this pile, this one is barely used. I never thought anybody would throw as much as I do away. Sorting like this takes time and money. And that's one reason why many recyclers around the world only take two of the seven kinds of plastic. Plants often reject the other types, along with anything that's too dirty and send them to landfills or incinerators. Refactory says it doesn't turn anything away. I don't believe there's a material out there that does not have a route to recovery or recycling. But manufacturers throw a lot of items away before they even go to market, including entire shipping pallets of recalled, mislabeled, or expired goods. Brands tend to be pretty secretive about this, so no one knows how much they destroy but about 70% of the cosmetics waste refactory handles comes from manufacturers, including this luxury perfume by Tom Ford. Perfume is considered hazardous waste, partially because it's flammable. Historically, that material has 100% gone into incineration. Refactory sends the glass and metal elsewhere for conventional recycling. And all of the plastic ends up here in the washing and shredding room. It smells uh, lovely. It's a mix of soaps and shower gels and perfumes, anything. So, it's, yeah, it's, it, people like to work in this area. This machine cuts the bottles and tubes into pieces about the size of a peanut shell and washes them with hot water. We'll shred it uh, first to make it nice and small so it will clean better. Then empties are washed two more times. The process requires a lot of water but the company says about half of this is rainwater it collects and reuses. To recycle, they recovered at least three, four times back through the wash. Once the pieces are clean, it's time to shred them even smaller. The material is fed into this big shredder um, where it's got a 20 mil screen on it, so it'll take it down nice and small. Along the way, a magnet removes some metal pieces, like the tiny springs inside soap pumps. Electrical currents pull out the others. The clean pieces head to the mixing room. This pulverizer grinds granules into a powder, which will become the outer layer. We powder the material down and we mix it in these big mixers behind me. A giant corkscrew inside this machine stirs it all together. The final blends head to the mill. Operators cook up three layered boards on machines that work like giant waffle makers, laying down the outer coating first. 
Today's client asked for boards that look like a birthday cake. We pour the sprinkles on first, which is um, a bottle caps. The frosting is a white powder layer that provides a smooth finish. It's made from recycled items like bottles, wheelie bins, uh, crates. And the final, thickest layer is the core. That's the very difficult to recycle material, so I've got mixed polymers and different melt points. That part is key. Pressing it into boards means all the packaging can mix together and nothing goes to waste. Making something more sophisticated, like a water bottle, would mean only using one type of recycled plastic and blending it with a lot of new plastic. This clamshell closes and heats the mixture to about 410 degrees Fahrenheit. Fusing takes about eight minutes. And then we cool down for about 25 minutes. If we did it any quicker, it would be malt. Um, but we do it nice and slowly, then it comes out nice and flat. These cuttings can go right back through the process, along with plastic sweepings from the floor. There's nothing that goes to waste from this process. The boards have lots of uses. Benches, bookshelves, planners, bus shelters. They can even outfit a whole room. It was designed to replace plyboard. We do toilet cubicles and shower rooms and all kinds of weird and wonderful things. But the product isn't perfect. It's not a silver bullet. Obviously, when these are cut and worked on, they, they do create a microplastic. Conventional methods often have the same problem. Studies have found higher levels of microplastics in the waters near recycling plants. Refactory tries to keep the issue under control by selling finished products, not building materials, so it can deal with the shavings in-house. The key to us is we know where that product is. If that product becomes damaged or they decide to change it, we can recycle it back into the next product for them. Refactory says it can recycle the boards and goods made from them over and over. Even so, there just isn't much demand for products made from this stuff. We gift a lot away, so we do a lot of charitable events, and we run a, a scheme called Skull Cycle. The company encourages its clients to think up uses for the boards, like decorating their offices. We can refit this, we can replace this, so we can go as big or as small as you want. So how does a business turn a profit making stuff people barely want? Well, it didn't at first. This portion of the business, for the first time in the last two years, has become profitable. The revenue mostly comes from clients paying Refactory to take the waste. It's all based around the success of gaining so many brands on board and making a success story out of what we are doing. Clients include Boots Pharmacy and The Body Shop, which have waste collection boxes in many of their stores. People pay for a box, um, and as part of that box fee, you will get your delivery and collection included in there, and also the um, fee to process the waste. And as the beauty industry faces criticism for creating a lot of garbage, more retailers are turning to recycling to clean up their image. So it's really refreshing to actually see brands approach us in the way that they're doing for the first ever time. Here at the body shop, this box fills up about every week. People can put in these personal care products with any brand at all. There's not just body shop items in there. Refactory claims its boards create less planet warming pollution than shipping waste to landfills. What we found was there's actually a 50% saving on carbon with a recycled board versus putting that same plastic into a landfill site. Workers at Refactory said they were proud to be part of an operation like this. Well, taking rubbish and but giving it a new pet, there's a new life, so to speak. The company has plans to expand but it will take a massive scale-up to address the sea of packaging waste. Stephen says the ideal scenario would be designing packaging with its disposal in mind. We've always had a, a very hard time understanding why brands bring certain products to market without actually understanding if there's a recycling route for them. 